In this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about Adobe InDesign CS6 and ways that you can use it to create an interior design portfolio. Uh, to uh, begin with here, what I want to be doing is looking at the interface a little bit and then creating a new document. So, uh, take note that this really looks similar to Adobe Photoshop, so for those of you that are familiar with Photoshop, you'll notice that. Um, it can be a little bit deceiving because when it comes down to it, InDesign really functions quite differently. So up at the top, next to the ID for InDesign, you'll see that we have similar menus like File, Edit, and then we get into things specific to InDesign like Layout and Type and Object. Below that, we have a contextual sensitive ribbon here. And right now I have type selected down below. So this is all dealing with text and type and uh, you know that type of formatting stuff. Over here on the left we have the toolbox, very very similar to Photoshop in the way it functions. Um, and some of the tools are similar. We'll have you know pencils and things like that, uh, but it will actually be quite a bit different than you're used to. Over on the right, we have a series of menus and palettes here, and once again, that functions in a similar way to Photoshop. And you know, we can pick uh, color, for example, and you'll see that we have these color options and other types of things, swatches once again. So some of this will be uh, similar to what we're used to, but then we'll be getting to things like pages and you know, very specific layout types types of things. So, to start a new document and get going, we're going to go up to File and New. And we have a variety of options here, but what we're going to be picking for a design portfolio will be Document. Okay, now since we're going to be doing something um, that we intend to print, up here at the very top, let's do Intent Print. You also have options here to do web or digital publishing, but we're not going to be getting into that right now. Then, underneath of that, we have some very important things. The most important to think about right away is this section where it says Facing Pages. So if you have this checked, your layout, your interface when you're working in design, will have two pages butted up next to each other as if you're looking at a book or a magazine or something like that. And then you will have an individual page uh, in the beginning. So that's very common for a port portfolio or uh, anything like that and I would encourage you to give it a shot. If you uncheck that you will have singular just individual pages one after the other uh, which is perfectly fine and definitely something you might do if you were you know doing a presentation or something. So I'm going to check facing pages and you'll get to see what that looks like in a minute. For number of pages I'm just going to give myself a bunch to work with. This isn't set in stone, you can add and remove them later, so don't stress out about it too much. I'm going to say 12. And starting page number is 1, that's fine. Under page size here, letter is the default. Uh, if you'd like to change that, if you click on that little arrow, there are standard sizes such as legal and tabloid and so on. And you could definitely pick one of them. If you want to do something custom, you can simply type those numbers in here. Notice that these are in uh, picas and points. And if those numbers don't translate to you very well, don't worry about it too much because you can just come inside of here and actually type in inches. So if I want to do something like 12 by 12 or 11 by 14, I can just type that in. So under width, I will type in 14, but then very importantly, I need to either type in I, an I, N, or I, N, C, H. Any of those will work. If I don't, it will revert back to PICAs and will be extremely small. And notice that it will actually change the numbers for you. 66 is 11. And then you can flip-flop between portrait and landscape, and it will switch them here. So I'll have mine in landscape. I'm not going to worry too much about columns here, the number and gutter. We're not going to get uh, into that type of thing too much. Then below that, we have margins available, both top, bottom, inside, outside. And these are 
kind of nice to have, especially in terms of, you know, lining up images and things like that. If you wanted to get rid of them, you could get rid of them entirely. And I could just say zero. And because I had this little link symbol checked, they will all update to zero. I'm actually going to leave that three in there. I think it's going to be kind of handy and I'll point out what that looks like when we get there. Then down at the very bottom, we have the bleed and slug. If you don't see these things, check where it says more options right here. Okay. So down under bleed and slug, this gets a little bit more complicated and will make a big difference uh, if you're printing and where you're printing. But the short version here is the bleed gives you an extra little margin around the outside of your document that you can take uh, borders and images to so that when you get things printed and cut, it makes it a lot easier on the person doing that. If things get printed slightly off, this gives you a little bit of buffer space instead of having it you know, need to be exactly precise. If you're going to print something, I would highly encourage you to call whoever you're going to have uh, print it to make sure, but a lot of times an eighth of an inch is what they're looking for. So I could type in one eighth I here, and then just click in another box, and it will update all of them because I have the lock symbol. The slug is Another optional space outside of your document that you can make even larger to print, um, you know, extra information, um, instructions, color tests, and things like that, but it wouldn't actually be on your final portfolio page. I'm not going to bother with that, but I will put the bleed there so you can see at least one of those. Once you're happy with all of your settings, we'll say OK. And it will be open to your brand new document. So, importantly, what we're seeing here is page one, and page one is an individual page. If I just zoom out a little bit, I'm doing control minus, you'll see that we actually have a whole series of pages. So page one is individual, as if you just opened the book, and then we have page two and three here, page two and three, and these are joined in the middle. So this is what's referred to as facing pages. And we scroll all the way down. And then here is page 12 at the end, also a singular page. All right, so I just did control zero to zoom way in. If we look at this page, just to explain what we're looking at a little bit, the black outline here the bold black outline, and it even has a little bit of a shadow, is the actual border of your page. That is the cutoff of your piece of paper. So it's 14 inches. See, here's the zero, and over, and then 11 down. That's the actual border of your page. The magenta and purple lines on the inside are just your margins. So that's just to help you line things up. It's a bit like the margin on your notebook paper or something like that. So don't confuse yourself and think that's the end of the page. It's actually that black line. And then this red line here is an eighth of an inch away from the black line, and that's your bleed. So that's just to help you bring out borders and images a little bit farther so it's a little bit easier for you to print and to do that type of thing. So we have the black outline is your page, the magenta and purple lines inside are just the margins to help you line things up. And then the red is the bleed line to help you in terms of printing and things like that. So to zoom in and out like I did before, I simply did control minus. To zoom out, you can do control plus to zoom in. And you can do control zero to zoom in on an entire page. Okay. Other than that, you can use the magnifying glass on the side, just like you can do in Photoshop, zoom in, hold down the alt key to zoom out, or go up to view and then you'll see zoom in and zoom out. So we have control minus and plus. We can also fit page to window and so on.